Hello Stoughton, my name is Steve Cavey, I'm a selectman for the town of Stoughton. Today is uh, December 18th, 2018, I'm going to give you guys an update on tonight's meeting. It is 20 minutes after midnight, so I'm going to try and make this brief because I'm getting a little, uh, getting a little punchy here. Uh, so the, one of the first things we got to actually was a town manager report. Um, uh, Robin had mentioned a number of things that, that are, she's working on right now, but one kind of stood out to me that I thought was worth bringing up. And that's that they're looking to uh, reorganize a little bit within town hall. And th I might be missing some of the details here, but it looks like uh, engineering, planning, and economic development, and there might be another department, are going to um, uh, be consolidated uh, under uh, Mark Tisdale's uh, leadership. Uh, one of the, the, the so they all have a common mission uh, for the most part. They, they are often uh, working together, so it makes, it makes sense to get them all uh, focused on the same same uh, objectives and, and uh, you know working with from the same playbook. Um, so it's definitely going to help organizationally, but also they um, the, the town has. Uh, been asked to fund a different another position in this town manager position and with this change that that will no longer be necessary so we'll be able to actually uh, uh, save some money uh, on headcount uh, by not having to hire an assistant town manager a lot of the responsibilities can be covered internally uh, between the town manager and uh, and Mark Tisdale so that, that's one that stood out to me I'm seeing some really really healthy uh, changes in town hall and I, I think that's that's a um, uh, it's going to get us pretty for, for much further down the road, um, and uh, we have really, you know, some really good leadership uh, working on our problems. So, let's see. That was town manager report. We had a, uh, a planning office update. Uh, the town planner, uh, Noreen O'Toole, uh, was not able to make it tonight, so uh, so we were provided some some uh, information based on the, the, what she had to uh, report to us. Uh, I'm not going to be I'm not going to go through it all, but there was an application for uh, mixed-use reconstruction at Malcolm and Parsons. Now, that's, that was supposed to have a public hearing uh, coming up, and I think that was actually December December 12th. And um, the developer sent an email uh, that morning, here it is, oh, no, that's not it. saying that he wasn't gonna be able to, to uh, there, there wasn't gonna be able to make it, that there were still some issues that they were working through with their design, here it is. Uh, they weren't so. Uh, so he asked if it, if the uh, meeting could be continued to January tenth, two thousand nineteen, uh, at their planning board uh, meeting, and so uh, they voted. Uh, planning board voted uh, four zero to uh, to uh, continue the public hearing uh, for that property uh, until um, just their next meeting, which was uh, uh, January tenth. So. <clears throat> That is the, the Malcolm Parsons site, uh, for those who aren't aware. That's right in the middle of downtown. There's a, uh, a building that, that burned down a long time ago, and it's I think it's about 10 years now, um, and uh, developers been working to get that up and going. Uh, we've been promised that we would see designs coming in. There'd be demolition in the um, uh, winter, and then uh, reconstruction in the spring so uh, we're still optimistic to, in seeing that and we are definitely going to uh, uh, keep our eyes on that project to make sure that it, it moves forward because it's it's really critical that our downtown look nice be presentable and, and be useful not and not we can't have a, a burned down building in the middle of our town um, so it's time to move on to that so that's the update on that one we also uh, we're looking to do a um, uh, solar power overlay in the Campanelli uh, Industrial Park, uh, and so so uh, there was an update that they they're going to be having a public hearing on January twenty fourth, two thousand nineteen, uh, for that, and then we had a bio ready silver and gold designation. So this will allow uh, it's a designation that basically uh, uh, tells uh, you know, the the bio industry that uh, that we're we've prepared ourselves uh, in a way that helps. Uh, helps them uh, in their business, and uh, and there's different levels too: a bronze, silver, gold. It really is a matter of, of of having infrastructure in place that that is is necessary for them. And it could be something really honestly as simple as having you know sewer systems, which we certainly have in a lot of areas. But if you in Camp Millie Park, we we don't have access to sewer, and so uh, so that that's a concern for a business that that works in that industry. So 
uh, so we're we're trying to find the uh, the path to to be a community that uh, can take advantage of of uh, a lot of investment in that in that industry. <clears throat> Uh, the next thing we talked actually uh, relevant to that conversation was uh, talked about was the Park Street and Camp Minnelli um, sewer project. This was an update by Mark Tisdale, uh, and uh, he mentioned that there's going to be a, 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 an annual town meeting article uh, where the, he's looking to request uh, money to begin to begin the, the design. This has been uh, there was a, a, a similar article in 2016, I believe. <coughs> um, and that, that failed for reasons I'll describe in a minute, but there was a, um, uh, what, what they found uh, is that there's both a high economic and also environmental um, uh, need for, for sewer running down Park Street uh, towards uh, Brockton. Uh, there isn't right now, and um, uh, the, the economic benefits uh, essentially pays for itself after not too long. Uh, they're looking to uh, they're thinking that, that the economic uh, uh, increase in new growth that we would see over 10 years, uh, uh, within 10 years, would be an annual uh, increase of, of over a million dollars a year. So, um, so that, that is uh, uh, you know, substantial, and, and as I said, it really would pay for itself within a, within a decade. Um, so the 2016 plan uh, was... Thirteen and a half million dollars, uh, but it did rely on the uh, uh, the people who actually would benefit directly from the sewer uh, uh, to to pay disproportionately, uh, to sort of disproportionate amount of this. And uh, uh, obviously, because they benefit, it makes sense. But on the other hand, uh, it was it was uh, exorbitant. It, it was something that they couldn't possibly have reasonably afforded. So so the plan died, and it didn't really work out. But the 2019 plan is a little bit less. So it went from 13.5 million to 9.8 million, and they did that by by taking advantage of of um, changes in technology. Uh, they adjusted the scope to uh, go less into the neighborhoods and more just the, the main uh, line, so that if, if people wanted to tie in later, they could. Uh, it's there, but but it, the the main need is just to have a a, a main line coming through. Uh, and also, they, they, they are working on a different source of funding um, that wouldn't rely on, on uh, uh, such a big hit to the, to the individual homeowners uh, and could you know, potentially uh, be covered by grants and the like. So. Okay, so now we get to the good stuff. Uh, actually, before we, we get to the good stuff, we did also had some more uh, annual license renewals. Uh, we had some public hearings on that, and we just we just talked briefly to uh, some folks that we need more information from. Um, overall, you know, we got through them all. The one thing I would like to mention is that it, during the public session uh, that is recorded, there was a um, uh, you know we went through a number of uh, of uh, businesses and 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 granted the licenses. The one that um, uh, was for clerical error reasons uh, didn't make it onto that list was the last shot. Uh, we realized this in executive session, so we returned to to open session afterwards, and uh, we renewed their licenses. So, uh, for anybody concerned, it wasn't on the video, but it, it did happen, and it will it will show up in the meeting uh, minutes. So, um, so. Those guys are covered. So we, we took care of the annual renewals. That's that's all done, which is great. Uh, the next two things, I'm going to go through these very quickly. We had a presentation from Selectman Hill. Uh, the presentation was on uh, on a financial plan for the public safety building uh, without debt exclusion or Proposition 2.5 override. So he uh, he worked through through a, a way to, uh, uh, with, with our financial team, uh, with a, a way to cover the cost of a public safety building that uh, would require neither uh, a debt exclusion similar to what we use for the high school uh, and also wouldn't require an, an override uh, that would allow us to, uh, allow us to uh, increase our taxes, uh, property taxes, uh, beyond the, the, the standard limits. Um, his, his presentation was excellent. Uh, if you get a chance to, to see it, you know, please, please watch it. It was, it was just a, you know, model. He was modeling, uh, you know, what our debt looks like currently, uh, and what the increases uh, of debt would look like over, 
I think it was over um, uh, the 20 years or so. And he made, he made a very persuasive argument that the increase, that we, uh, as debt come, rolls off, uh, the increase in debt um, would take its place. So we're not, we really wouldn't be chasing our debt level uh, year over year uh, significantly. Um, but that we would also have to, uh, you know, we have some time right now before we, we actually start the borrowing process uh, to, to sort of uh, put some, some money away into a, a debt stabilization fund so that if there is fluctuations that we can't anticipate, we would have the money now to uh, save the way to, to uh, protect us. And so I, I, I think that was a really, th really thoughtful presentation. Obviously, you know, there's, he, they're, they're, they're still working through um, and thinking through some of the, the um, finer points of it. But I think at a high level, I think it, it, it made sense. Uh, and now it's our job to think through it and start to try to try to pick at the corners and see if there's anything that, that uh, uh, could, be, could use some improvements. But um, you know, I, I think we're not gonna we're not gonna make any uh, huge dents into this. I think the argument was strong. So the last thing that we talked about was the initial, uh, which is uh, our town manager, uh, Robin Monksian, sorry, Robin Monksian, uh gave a presentation on the initial. Um, this was initial presentation and discussion of potential capital requests for 2019 annual town meeting. Uh, just we we had a list of uh, capital items that the town wants to purchase. Some of it's the the regular stuff, uh, and you know we need to fix windows or we need to do some kind of maintenance. Uh, this some things that stand out. Uh, our town needs a new fire truck, for example, and that's going to be expensive. And with the fire truck, there's also accessories that you need to, to buy with it, and uh, and you know questions about whether or not to include those or separate them out was essentially the, the bulk of our discussion, and we we. Um, uh, uh, also just wanted to look to see if there are any funding sources. These are capital uh, purchases. Obviously, a lot of these are going to be borrowed for, uh, but also there's, there's other ways to finance it, either through uh, CPC, where it may be relevant. Um, some of them have to be paid for in cash. Uh, some of them we, we may not want to view as capital expenditures, like, uh, like bulletproof vests for the fire department. Um, so you know, it's, it's this is not something they've had in the past that I that I, that I know of. But it's it, the public safety um, strategy has changed <coughs> enough that that it warrants uh, making sure that that our firefighters are protected if they need if they need uh, bulletproof vests. So uh, so we're going to be getting them. Uh, we're going to ask for them at least. Uh, but the the amount is is kind of low. It's uh, relatively speaking. For capital, for borrowing, right, six thousand dollars, and so um, uh, it doesn't make sense if this is really something that we're going to they're going to use um, on an ongoing basis, just to roll it into their operating budget instead of <coughs> borrowing for it or you know every every whatever five or ten years coming back and asking for for new vests, where you just make this you know just like like pencils and say like this is just these are the tools they use and and every every so often we need to go out and buy new ones. Um, so we're, uh, that was our discussion. Uh, as I said, I got a little punchy. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. We're getting to 1230 now and, uh, and I just want to go home. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to end it there. We, we, that was uh, everything we discussed. Uh, as always, thank you very much, uh, for allowing me to serve the town, uh, and uh, have a wonderful evening. Take care.